If you feel like you're short on time, overwhelmed by all of the organizing tips you hear and all of the different spaces you could possibly organize in your home, I'm gonna give you the top 10 things that you should do to get your home looking more organized. Hey everyone, my name is Sophie from Sophisticated Organization. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you 10 things that you can do to make your home look more organized right now. These tips are quite easy, I promise, and they're gonna make a huge impact on your house. If you're ready for it, let's jump into the first thing and that is clear countertops. Having clean and clear countertops makes such a difference when you walk into somebody's home. One of the main areas that you're gonna to wanna to look at is your kitchen countertops. Now, if you're like me, you like having a little bit of decor, maybe you have limited kitchen space so you feel like you need to have your utensils out there. If you have a large toaster like I do, I have a toaster oven so that stays out. Whatever it might be, try and limit those number of appliances if we're talking about the kitchen countertops or really any other other flat surfaces or countertops that you might have. Keep it as limited as possible because the more that you add, the more crowded it's gonna look and the more cluttered it's going to look. The next thing is containment. Containment is so key when you're thinking about organizing. And I'm sure we can all relate to thinking about our favorite organizing photos. There's probably some sort of containment involved, whether that's baskets or bins or drawer organizers. Containment can really mean a lot of different things, but when you have loose items all over the place, just kind of floating around, whether it's in a drawer, a cabinet, or a closet, that's when you're gonna have a disorganized look. And containing wherever you can is key. And I also like to think about how far you should take those levels of containment. Even if I have like a large bin, I make sure the items that are in that bin can be kind of free floating around or try and think a level deeper. Do I need a smaller container that goes within that bin? Now you don't wanna have like a box and a box and a box situation, but a great example is under my bathroom sink, I added some drawers from the container store, but even within those drawers, I added drawer organizers. So it's containment within containment. Just because you have that first level of containment doesn't mean you're done. And I don't want you to feel like you have to go out and purchase a ton of products and spend a lot of money. But as you're thinking about those things that you wanna organize, just make sure you're doing the job right and not just getting a big bin and throwing everything in there because then you're defeating the purpose. This one is one of my favorites and that's organizing by color. The first thing I think about when I think of organizing by color or in rainbow order is organizing the closet. That's actually quite functional for most people to organize their closets by color. Not only when you subcategorize by short sleeve, long sleeve, dresses, whatever it might be. And then also by color, can you find exactly what you're looking for to make that perfect outfit? But it's also visually appealing. So think beyond the closet. And when you want your home to look organized, let's be honest, a lot of organization is the visual look of things and making it aesthetically pleasing to the eye. What's better than organizing something by color? And I use this all over the place. If you haven't tried organizing your bookshelf in rainbow order, that can look really beautiful. If you have a huge collection and you're an avid book reader and you like to organize by alphabetical order or genre or author or something like that, by all means do that. But if you have a smaller collection and you can probably find what you're looking for, try organizing by color. I organize my spices by color. I'm the one who cooks so I know where everything is and I like the look of it organized by colors. Play around with that and see if you can make your space more visually appealing and look more organized by organizing by color. The next thing that's gonna make a world of difference is uniformity. This can happen all over your home. I have a great example in my kitchen. I organize my kitchen cabinets by the type of material. The first cabinet that I have is all of our white dishes. The next cabinet over is all of our glass dishes. That way I know where things are so it's functional for me, but it's also, again, aesthetically pleasing and beautiful and looks very organized. Even if those things are kind of mix matched around, all of those white dishes together and all of the clear dishes together just look organized. And you can take that 
anywhere you want in your home. Another good example is decanting products. And this one, some people are pretty hesitant about because it takes a lot of extra work. Sometimes it takes buying a lot of products, but it does make a space look really organized. If you think about those Pinterest worthy spaces, having those uniform containers and having all of your pantry items decanted, or I even go as far as to decant my board games. I've shared that before. Having that uniform look makes everything look really organized. So try and bring uniformity wherever you can. Next up is labels. And if you know me at all, you know that I am a lover of labeling things. Although I will admit you can go too far with labeling items in your home. I wouldn't label absolutely everything. That's actually gonna create more of a cluttered look, but having a curated amount of labels is actually going to make your space look more organized, but it's also actually going to be more organized because you're going to make sure you're putting things in the right spot that matches that label. You're gonna know where to find things and where to put things away. And a huge added benefit is your family members will also know where to find things and where to put things away. So it's almost like no more excuses for the rest of your family asking where to find something, or where to put something away because it's labeled. And I've had a few spaces that I've played around with not labeling for a while. I honestly even forgot what was in which bin or basket, especially if they have a top on them and they're closed. I would think they're all uniform and I can't remember which one's which. So especially if you're taking the previous tip of uniformity, label things so you know exactly where everything's stored. This one can be really tough and that's keeping like items together. So the reason I say it can be tough is because a lot of times we like to put things where we use them the most often. And I think that's a great organizing tip and a tip that I give quite often. I like to put things where I use them. It makes sense, right? So I like to put my mugs by my coffee maker and by my coffee. So every morning when I go to make my coffee, I'm not running around in circles. It's all right there in this little coffee station with mugs and coffee, that's fine because you only want to store them in one place. But think about other types of items that you might use in multiple areas, which can create the problem. Cleaning products are a great example of this. There's kind of a debate that a lot of people have. Do you have one central location where you keep all of your cleaning supplies or do you keep bathroom cleaners in every bathroom, kitchen cleaners in your kitchen and keep everything everywhere? I like to keep most of my cleaners all in one spot and keep my bathroom cleaners in a caddy so I can bring them back and forth. There's a few exceptions for kitchen cleaners because I'm in there cleaning all the time. I have a multi-surface cleaner in there and a glass cleaner and then kitchen applicable products are going to be in there. Same with laundry products. But if you have a house with four bathrooms, for example, you don't want to be putting bathroom cleaners in every single bathroom. That's just multiplying the number of products that you have and creating clutter in multiple different spaces. So using a caddy that you can carry around is a great solution. Another example that I can think of is I like essential oils and have a couple of diffusers. I have one in my office and one in my bedroom and used to have essential oils kind of all over the place and I have since decided to put them all in one spot. I can bring them around and fill up my diffusers in the morning or in the evening whenever I'm doing it, but I don't need to have those products in every specific spot because again, you're gonna purchase more and you're just gonna make your space look more cluttered. One of my biggest pet peeves and causes of visual clutter is cords. Now my husband thinks I go a little overboard on the cord and cable management, but it truly is something that I think can destroy the look of a space, especially a living room or an office. Those tend to be the two places where we have lots and lots of cords, of course, because of our TVs and the other electronics you have in a living or family room. And then in your office, you have printers and computers and so many electronics, you can get lots of cords really quickly. Finding whatever you can do to wrangle those cords and make sure you don't see them when you're looking in those spaces will really help elevate the look of your space and decrease the clutter that you'll see in both of those rooms or really anywhere else in your home. Now you don't have to go as far as drilling a hole in your wall and feeding the cords through there. I live in an apartment right now, so I actually can't do that. But think of creative solutions, using zip ties to keep the cords together. There are lots of different products that will help feed cords in different places and hide them. You can even use command hooks and affix the command hooks in a little line and put that cord in the command hooks and keep it organized that way. So there are lots of solutions, but again, whatever you can do to hide those cords, you're really going to make your home look more organized. 
Next up is decor. And if you are a decor lover, this can be really difficult for you. But the phrase less is more is so true when it comes to decor and organization. The more decor you add to your home, the more cluttered it's going to look. I know that's counterintuitive again for decor lovers. You think bringing in decor is going to make your space look even more beautiful, but oftentimes with the more you bring in, it's gonna do the exact opposite. It kind of goes back to that first tip of clean countertops and clean surfaces. The more you have, the more cluttered it's going to look. Limiting things like family photos is really huge in this category. For the most part, you are the family that lives there. You don't need every photo ever printed on your walls or on your desk and in your bedroom and everywhere. We like to have one bookshelf where we have honestly a fair amount of decor and a fair amount of photos. Beyond that, we don't have any other family photos in our apartment. My husband has one of us in our office from our engagement that I gave him, I think for his birthday. But other than that, they're not scattered in every single room and it's a very limited number. The other thing that can really help reduce the cluttered look of decor is grouping small items together. So if you have a bunch of little trinkety items and they're all dispersed everywhere, it's going to look like an absolute mess. If you find a small tray and put all of those items together, you're keeping all of those things that you love and the decor items that you want to display but by putting them together it almost tricks the eye into thinking that it's one item of course it's not but grouping them together will make your space look less cluttered and look more organized so if you're not willing to reduce the amount of decor that you have that's a really great tip for you to implement this one's easier said than done, but you need to create a rule to put away the piles. I'm talking about all of those piles when you first walk in the door, you throw everything down together and just leave it in a pile, maybe on your kitchen island like I do when I walk in, or nail piles. So many of us are terrible when it comes to paper organization and mail and just have a thick stack of papers that we need to go through. Doing things right the first time when you walk in the door, hanging up your jacket, putting your shoes away, putting your keys away, your purse, whatever it might be, is gonna make a huge difference. Same with paper piles and coming up with a mail sorting system. So when you get the mail, you sort it right away. I think it's okay to have an action pile or a to-do pile, but keeping things just out on your desk and having them grow and grow and grow is exactly what I'm talking about that's going to cause visual clutter and make your home look like it's actually pretty messy. If you think about somebody walking in your home right now and you have those piles, those are probably some of the first things that you're gonna wanna quickly clean up and hide. And the fact that you wanna quickly clean them up and hide them is your cue to know that it's making your home look messy. Whatever you can do to eliminate those piles and create a rule for yourself and for your family that you won't have any piles build up and linger around will make your house look so much more organized. The last tip is to put effort into the most visible places. That means making your bed every morning. Our living room is another one I think of. Fluffing those couch pillows and putting them away after a night where we've been hanging out on the couch. If you have a kitchen where you maybe have some glass cabinets and you can see into them, those are the ones that you're gonna wanna prioritize and make sure they look nice and neat. Of course, the rest of your kitchen cabinets, you want them to look neat as well. But if you have spaces that are more open than others, that's where you're gonna wanna focus in on your time because when you walk around and look at your house and those main areas that you can see with the naked eye without lifting something up or opening up something, that's gonna be what's going to make your space look like it's messy. I know it sounds obvious, but focusing on those areas is gonna make such a difference in the organization of your home. Those are the 10 things that I think you should do to make your home look more organized. Let me know if there's something that you do that I didn't mention that you feel like makes your space look really organized or if you had one of these that was your favorite. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It would really mean a lot to me. And until next time, I will see you guys later.